Commander Tora headquarters in Berlin, the Cold War reaches a new crisis. The Russians haul down the red flag, signifying Soviet withdrawal from the Four Power Command that has governed Berlin since the war's end. Taking no pains to disguise the fact that they want the Western Allies out of Berlin, the Reds begin a blockade of the city. Tracks are removed from the roadbeds, and trains are stopped for so-called technical reasons. Barges carrying food and coal find the waterways suddenly closed to them. Highways are blocked and deserted. The aim of the Russians to starve the entire city into submission backfires completely. In the shadow of the Soviet sector, 300,000 Berliners gather in protest and pledge support to the Western Allies. Meanwhile, Anthony Eden arrives in the German capital for an emergency meeting, as does the French military commander, General Koenig. Later, America's General Lucius D. Clay, speaking for the Western Allies, announces their decision. We have a right to be in Berlin, and we intend to maintain that right. But how ask freedom-loving people the world over and anxiously await the answer? Can this be true, or is it just an alluring hot-weather mirage to lead us on? To answer the question, I'm told this is Atlantic City's competition. <laughs> All personnel of the 19th Troop Carrier Squadron report to 19th Operations immediately. Now what? Somebody forgot to clean a carburetor. We all got to stand in a corner. Sounds like a hop to Australia to me. Well, say that. I got to take them now. What's the name? I'll keep it for you. I'm good at that sort of thing. Who isn't? Who will gather in September to buy for the missing item? Which capacity the winner? And as soon as ready, proceed to Fairfield to soon California. At ease. Then to Westover Field, Chicopee Falls, Massachusetts. This detonation will be for the purpose of operational training and will be for a period of 45 days. Pardon me, Major. My name is Kowalski. I'm a GCA operator. Yes? I was wondering, sir, if I could be replaced on this mission. Why? Well, sir, if we're going where I think we're going, I wouldn't do a very good job. What have you got against Westover Field? Nothing, sir, but I got an awful lot against Germany, and I got a hunch that's where we're heading for. The Air Force isn't run on hunches, Sergeant. That's why we put lights on runways. Have a good trip. Who are you and where are you from? Over. Uh, this is Air Force 7223, 19th Troop Carrier Squadron, Hickam Field, Honolulu. Rhine Main Tower to 7223, stand by for further instructions. Over. Roger, 7223, standing by. Air Force 6421 to Rhine Main Tower, over. Rhine Main Tower to 6421, where are you from? Over. Rhine Main Tower from 6421, we're from 54th Troop Carrier Squadron from Alaska, over. Grand Main Tower, this is Air Force 9922. Over. 
Where are we from? Well, we're the 20th, from Ramey, Puerto Rico. Over. Boy, this place sure caught it, didn't it? Not enough. This is where they should have used the A-bomb. Find main tower to 7223. Make a right turn and then the runway. You'll find some of your squadron in parking area. Park there. What's the matter? You fellas cold? Ah, shut up. <laughs> I told you to take warm clothes. You all ain't going to Germany. It just don't make good sense. Well, honey child, you all is here. And before you're through, you all's going to wish you never left the old plantation. Hey, fellas, hi, wait in the building. Someone will come on and let me show you where your bullets are. Hey, how about pulling up to the dry spot? Man, this is a dry spot. You see the rest of the beard. It's up the elbow here. So we don't have to be here a while. You'll come right to the same spot here on your day off and walk around because it's so dry. Yeah, yeah. Got more class than the Savoy. The maintenance you brought's been unloaded. You men set up your supply depot. I'll show you where. You engineers, report to your planes immediately. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You called me with the rest of the engineers. I'm Kowalski, GCA. Yeah, you're down for Berlin. Berlin? Temple up. Catch a ride on any plane. Well, Berlin, here I come. Big this fool ain't bad enough. I gotta fall right in the middle of it. Berlin, yeah. Pick up the heading of 55 degrees. Sure glad they sent you along, Lieutenant. I've been sweeting by now. I guess it's just a milk run when you get used to it, huh, Lieutenant? Oh, sure. All you have to do is to stay in this 20-mile corridor, hold exactly 170 miles an hour, maintain exactly 6,000 feet, fly instruments continuously, keeping a three-minute interval, making radio checks on the second, maintain... Go ahead, Temple Office, this is 7223. Roger. Temple Hop. Flyburger, before landing checklist. Heater switches off. Oh. Off. Switch to take off and climb. Take off and climb. Main tanks on. On. Bypass valve down. Down. Pumps on high. High. Certainly put this field in a nice place, didn't they? Twenty degree flap. Twenty. Full flap.
back. Power off. Just like landing in the Rose Bowl. After landing checklist. Top power PM. Left high. Lock them up, Sergeant. Give me bitter, bitter. Stay away from me. Come on, come on. What do you want to do? Start another war? Hey, I think I'll check you out. Okay, I'll look you up next trip. Well, I'm asleep. Just leave your car. So long. Thanks for the lift, Lieutenant. Uh, which way is operation? It's over there. Uh, so long. So long, Lieutenant. Hey, these go out, please. Pardon me, sir. Yes, Sergeant. Is it all right if I uh, leave the field for a while? <laughs> I'd like to take a look and see what Berlin looks like. Not allowed, Sergeant. You mean we have to stand around all the time we're here? You know how long we'll be here? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? And you've got to stay right for the plane. Four hours ago, it was so nice and clean. Oh, if this thing keeps going, wait till you see it four months from now. Oh, brother.
Frogging do frogs air frog. Read you have a Frogging air frog. Use the new runway. Now here's the bowling alley with lights. Peter switches off. Off. Boost the pump time. High. Fingers crossed. Cross. Down flat trail. Trail. Graveyard down there. They sure make it convenient for you. Huh? Full flap. Full flap. Hey, look, they got the anagrad out. Wonder what's up. Probably some VIPs in the Pentagon. Today, many people are gathered here to celebrate a milestone in the history of this truly amazing air operation. Only a moment ago, when plane number 37 touched down on the north runway, it brought the total of airlift flights to the city to 100,000. To express their profound gratitude, representatives of the people of Berlin are present to present gifts to the crew of number 37. The honor guard of the Office of Military Government is also present, and in a moment, but now the lieutenant appears to be ready to give his first command. approaching plane number 37 to escort the crew to the microphones here beside me where the brief ceremony will be held. I wonder where they're going now. They're going to spell out Navy. Must be some brass someplace. Nobody this way. Nope. Nobody this way either. Fellas, I got a feeling this is us. Oh, it can't be. It must be a mistake. You boys are elected for something. <laughs> Don't bother. You look simply lovely. Fix your hat. Just as if you and I were getting married, Lieutenant. And always, you are flying to it. In every kind of weather. In rain, in sunshine, and in fog. And so, I'm giving to you, Captain Chris Case, a thanks to you from men of Berlin. Best. I accept this, not for myself, but for all those 
connected with Operation Biddle. Not just the Americans, the French, and the line, I mean, British, too. Thank you. And now, Helmut Brauker, 10 years old, representing the children of Berlin, will make his presentation to co-pilot Lieutenant Alfred Freiberger of St. Petersburg, Florida. Now, Helmut, there's not one little old thing to be afraid of. Go on, say your speech, just like I told you. Go on now, go on. The boys and girls of Berlin present this to you. And Buna sing your vera vera ma. For everything, y'all is done. Well, Captain Stewart said what I was going to say, so I'll just say Dr. Shane. Good boy, good boy. I have a job. Now to the flight engineer, Technical Sergeant Daniel McCullough from St. Paul, Minnesota. The presentation will be made by Frau Frederica Burkhardt. Sergeant McCullough, I offer you this simple gift from all the women of Berlin from the wives and mothers and from those who are alone. We have watched your planes bring to this unfortunate city not only food and coal, but serums and medicines without which hundreds would have perished. We have watched your planes take out sick and undernourished children and return them healthy and well-fed and happy. Now, this act in Tasha may appear to you to be empty, but believe me, it's filled with the gratitude and admiration of hundreds of thousands of women. Please take it. Oh, yeah. Give him a kiss, will you? Yeah, mark and meet their cousin. Nine, nine, mark and meet their gross, a grateful cousin. All right, I will. Hang on, Sarge, you'll get a draw. That's it, Sarge. Well, that was fun. When you all move over there, we want to get your sticks oh. together, huh? Get right over there with her. I'll bunch up a little bit, will you? Yeah, get right over there. Go on. Hey, Sarge, put that thing down, will you? Take her by the arm. Go ahead. Make with a team. Real close. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy. Happy, happy. Happy, happy. Happy, happy. Happy, my husband was killed in Russia. I'm sorry. That seems so long ago. I wish we had time to have a little talk. Let's do a meet again sometime. Uh -uh. They won't let us into Berlin. What, not even for a little while? Well, maybe if I'm very lucky, my plane catches on fire. Yeah, they might give me a couple hours. I'm lucky like that. Did I get to see you? Happy, very happy. Paul? <laughs> I haven't got a phone, but I give you the number of the person that lives next to me. It's seven five four five three two. Roger. You know, I might even set that plane on fire myself. Okay, that's it, fellas. The boys have to get back to work. Hey, can I get a picture of him where he's kissing the girl, huh? Yeah. Peter Sean. Sean? A Peter Sean. <laughs> Associated Press. I hear from St. Paul. Yeah. Well, the St. Paul Dispatch is one of our member papers. They've been asking me to do one of those hometown boy flies lift stories. I don't usually work with this box, but most of our photographers are sick. Would you mind helping me out with some pictures and answering some questions? I don't know. I've I've read some of those pale blue yonder stories. I feel pretty silly. No, this has got a different angle. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Look, tell you what I want to do. I want to follow you and a load of flour from Rhine, Maine, into Berlin, through the warehouses, with the flour winding up as a loaf of bread in some kid's arms. I see. Uh, you mean I'd, uh, I'd have to come to Berlin, hmm? For a day or two. It wouldn't take more than a couple of hours' work, though. You know, sir, that, uh, that kind of story hasn't ever been done before. Funny, my mother writes to me, and she says a lot of people ask her, what happens to the food after Danny delivers it? That's that after I deliver it. Well, how do I know? I've never been outside Temple Hall. Well, you'll do it then. 
You can't get me into Berlin. I'll talk to headquarters. You know, the Air Force doesn't mind a little publicity now and then. They don't. I didn't know that. It's very interesting indeed. Fine, I'll pick you up Ryan Main in a couple of days. Good deal. Right, okay. Good. You goof off. Well, I'll probably be working 18 hours today, and all the time you'll be in Berlin with some beautiful Shotzi. Shotzi? Very colorful expression. You Air Force men are certainly interesting to listen to. Now, quit the clowning and sit down here. The least you can do is take this trip. No, 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 I couldn't. Uh, really, I'd be too nervous. I'd push all the wrong buttons. How long have you been flying the lift, Sarge? Uh, since the first week in July. We all came over together. 19th troop carrier from Honolulu. We're, we're part of the 53rd now. How do you like your job? Oh, oh, it's a wonderful opportunity, and I'm grateful for it. You, you really learn your job on this operation. It gives you the feeling of accomplishing something. <laughs> Approaching the building area on a heading of 270. We're coming in GCA. Listen to it. A friend of mine, best in the building. You are now over building area going high on glide path. Adjust your rate of descent. Glide path improving. Quarter mile from touchdown. On course on the glide path. Approaching the end of runway. On course on the glide path. Now start breaking your glide. Take over visually now and complete your landing. That I gotta see. Well, this is the whole setup. You understand the principle of GCA? I wouldn't want to bid on it. Well, without getting too technical, it uh, works something like this. See, the antennas on top of the shack send out radio signals which hit an object and are reflected back here and show up on these scopes. Like an echo. Only a little faster, Junior. They go out and come back with the speed of light. Like a fast echo. Now, this scope is a 360-degree scan, and it revolves with the uh, antenna on the roof, you see? Now, these spots that you see here, we call them uh, permanent echoes. Those stationary spots of their houses and buildings and chimneys and so forth. Are the ones that are moving with the tails on them. You see them there? No, where? Right there. There's one. There's another one. Mm -hmm. Well, those are planes coming in and going out. Now, this uh, scope isn't critical enough to land the plane, so we have these two, see? Now, here's the approach. That's the beginning of the runway. And over here, that's the glide path. Now, any deviation in the normal descent is shown up in this meter right here. Well, if you look through the glass, you can see it. Now, he's bringing one in now. You see him? He's 50 feet too high. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the course scope, which shows whether you're too far to the left or the right, and here is the lateral approach, which shows the end of the runway. You see that scratch there? Yeah. Well, we just keep steering them in, we're right down the middle. Come on outside, I want to show you something. Uh -oh. I'll do my best to promote better feeling between Americans and Germans tonight. Well, go and talk. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, honey. I'll meet you, Sean. Thanks again. Oh, so long. So long, see you, Sergeant. I'll see you. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you know how they bake bread in Germany. A mess sergeant could have told you in two minutes. I didn't want a date with a mess sergeant. Where can I telephone? I just went down the corner. Good. You know someplace I could take her for dinner? Not around here. I know a spot where they don't bother you. Look, why don't I pick up my Shotzi and we all have dinner? You've got a Shotzi? After four months, even I get tired of looking at nothing but blips on a radar scope. That little half pint works in a mobile snack bar. I'm not sure you'd latch on to some American secretary up at Amgris. No, with Debits, perhaps I can see you on Thursday. How do I know I want to see her on Thursday? With Gertie, it's different. If I want to see her, I see her. If I feel like talking, she talks, and if I don't feel like it, she keeps her mouth shut. Anyway, she gives me one day service on my laundry. PX takes a week. Idea. Look, they belong in the gutter, and if they don't get out of my way, I'm going to push them there. Got a coin? Here. Hey, Fritz! Well, bring it over here. If I wanted in the middle of the street, I'd ask for it there. Come on. Not at all. She is working where was Barbarossa Strasse 26. That's right over by the field. You can drop me off. Okay. Go in, bitte. 26 Barbarossa. Bitte? 26 Barbarossa. It's over here in the field. Uh, Barbarossa Strasse 26. 26. No, 26, neighbor Münchner. Yeah, thank you, sir, yeah. Bitte, bitte. What's the matter? Don't you trust your German? For me, they get only English. If they don't understand me the first time, I keep hollering at them until they do. Where does that get you? I learned my German the hard way, and while I'm around, that's the way they're going to learn English. Now, don't start feeling sorry for them. They hate our guts. The situation was reversed. They kick your teeth in twice a day. Barbarossa 26 neben München. Ja, das ist da drüben, ja. Wie kann es? Ja, ja. Ja, ja. Dankeschön. They, uh, they gave me 24 hours. I've used up five of them already. Seeing me like this surprises you, I suppose. Yes, it does. I guess I didn't picture you as such hard work. Not always. I used to be a secretary for the head of a big laundry here in Berlin, but came the brocade and... Oh, look out. Give me a kind of time to finish, please. Yeah, it's You want me to go? Oh, that's all right. You know, came the brocade. No lies, no longer, no position, and nobody else needed a secretary. And in Berlin, when you are between 18 and 55, you must work. Couldn't they find something easier for you than this? Oh, maybe they could, but they didn't. It's hard, but we get the highest ration card, and that's very important here. Say, I hope after all this, you're free for dinner tonight. Thank you, yes. Our book out helps over here. Yes, call me up, so on. Hey, uh, how, how late do you work? I'll be about 20 minutes. All right. But I've got to do some shopping on my way home. That's okay, I'll wait. Yeah, good.
hours, it seems like so little. Before you fly that stuff in, it seems like an awful lot. It is. But almost 70% of what you bring is coal. Yeah, I guess when you divide up what's left among two and a half million people, it's not so much. It's more than we expected. When the Russians blockaded Berlin, we all thought you would leave. There was an old saying, when the bear growls, the eagle will fly. And it happened. But you didn't fly out, you flew in. And we are grateful, very grateful. You know what? You've got a British accent. Where did you get it? <laughs> My teacher at school studied in England. Oh. Well, on you, it sounds good. Thank you. Over there. talk to Russians. Yeah. Aren't you afraid I'll report you? Oh, Americans know I do. <laughs> one time, they fixed telephone for me. <laughs> you the only one does this? Oh, no. Russians have, like me, a Tegel airfield and a Gato, too. But the official figures on airlift are printed in the paper every day. The Russians must see it. But Russians don't believe it. Why? The figures are correct. The Air Force wants people to know. Uh, you believe this. I believe this. But Russians don't believe it. Russians believe nothing they see, only what other Russians say. <laughs> you know, here in Berlin on the streets, we have, uh, um, oh, my English, it's uh, no, fake visor, you know, to this place, to that place. Signpost. Yeah, signpost. Eh? This way to Andrews Barracks, that way uh, to Angus. Hmm? Russians don't believe this. They say no one could be such a dumb cop to show the way to General Clay's office. <laughs> Tell me something. Yeah. You count the plane. Yeah. The other spies do the same thing. Yeah. Then your figures must agree with the figures in the paper. No, no. Why not? Russians don't believe papers. And so I say sometimes less. That Russians believe. Make them very happy. <laughs> Here in that house on third, uh, uh, what's that, um, uh, Stockwerk, you know, and the uh, floor, yeah. yeah, on third floor there's living a man, a Malcher, and he spies on me, but the Russians don't know that Malcher is the husband of my sister, and so Malcher says to Russians, Stieber's a very honest spy. <laughs> <laughs> Who spies on Malcher, his uncle? No, his nephew. Russians have 15,000 Germans as spies. 
They give us Pyox, you know, that are parcels with fat, made sugar sometimes, clothes and cigarettes, and Russian cigarettes. Bad. I would like to work for Americans. Do they have many spies? No, not so many. Only 10,000. 10,000? That means 25,000 spies spying on each other. Things must get a little, uh, a little gemished. Oh, yeah, a little there gemished. <laughs> yeah. But there's also maybe 500 who are spying for both sides. Hmm. You must love. That's necessary. It's a very good thing for, um, uh, it's no work. Unemployment? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good thing for unemployment. Oh, it's just... American Airlines commercial. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, Ihr Sohn wurde von russischer Polizei verhaftet. Er ist gleich nach Hause gegangen. Können Sie mir sagen, wo er wohnt? Ich muss unbedingt die Uniform haben. In Charlottenburg, Ulmstraße 22. Hat er Telefon? Nee. Ulmstraße 22? Hm? Danke. Of all the Schneiders in Berlin, the Russians have got a pinch the son of the one that's got my pants. Well, I can always sit by a window and watch lift planes land at Temple. What do they want him for, anyway? Oh, I don't know. For the Russians, who knows? Maybe he says something they didn't like. Maybe he is something they need in Russia, the electric lightsman, or he can fix engines. Walks into Russian sector and... Whoosh, auf Wiedersehen. Say, maybe you could go to the tailor's house and bring him back here. Yes, but for me, he might not come if you went an American soldier. What am I going to wear? Oh, no, no, sir. If I'm seen out of uniform, I've had it. They give me 10 days, a good buy strike. Worse than that, they'll take away my PX card. Yeah. Look, needless, we haven't seen those yeah. for years. I forgot my cigarettes. Oh, we can get some down there. I only got script. Oh, you can pay me later. He's got everything but bananas. You want banana? Uh, I... No. No, 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 How can you go out with me? Look at this. I'd look like that, too, if it weren't for some friends in St. Louis. They send me these clothes. What's the matter with him? He says somebody's got coffee in a lesson down over his search. Haben Sie Kaffee bei sich? Wochenlang habe ich ihn nach und nach zusammengespart, um ihn Kohlen zu tauschen. She's been saving the coffee to trade it for coal. Stecken Sie doch unterm Hut. Unterm Hut sehen Sie nicht nach. Also, wo ist jetzt Kaffee? Steckt unter dem Hut da. Sie können mir ihn doch nicht wegnehmen. Ruhig, du kannst sein froh, dass ich dich nicht mitnehme. Wenn ich 
Chavez River. Und nun weiß ich nicht, wann er wieder nach Hause kommen will. She says her husband went to a Russian sector to see whether he could find any trace of their son. And she doesn't know when he'll be back and he's got the key for the store with him. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do. Tell her we'll be back later. Sagen Sie Ihrem Mann, dass wir später wiederkommen, ja? Ja. Auf Wiedersehen. Wiedersehen. So what are we going to do? We're supposed to meet my friend in half an hour. We could call and have dinner and come back here afterwards. Go like this? All day won't bother you. Okay. How about that? Now the sun is shining. What's the address? Savern. I know where that is. Not far from here. We can take the trolley for away and then it's only a short walk. Walk? Wait a second. Get the Savern in the shoe. No. Before things were like this in Germany, how long would it have taken till I could put my arm around you? Oh, that would have depended on two things. Which part of Germany and which part of me? Like this, so close, months and months. This blockade is a matter of And this was just filled with trees. Oh, it was such a beautiful park. And on Sundays, families used to walk along here and look at the statues. Who are all these characters? Frederick the Great. These are all the military heroes. It's called Sigis Alley, Victory Avenue. They don't look for Sigis anymore, do they? Berlin University. 
and when they burnt the books, he spoke out against them violently. They burned his books, and I haven't seen him since. Now, it's my way to say to say, please, Harding. You mind if she sits with us? Look, I just asked a couple of simple insulting questions. And I got a couple of insulting answers, so we're even. I'm sorry, okay? Okay. Okay. Your father must have been a very brave man to say those things at that time. Not brave, he just believed very strongly. My father believed too. But the wrong thing. Your father was a louse. That's the big reason you people got sucked in by Hitler, this father business. I swear I know that guy from somewhere. From the time German kids are so high, Papa is the boss. He tells you what to say, when to shut up, what to do, what to think. Papa can be the biggest jerk in the world, but what Papa says goes. Then along comes another jerk like Hitler, and he becomes the Papa for all the Papas. Yes, I've read about that father complex many a time. I doubt whether it's true, but if it is, you are certainly doing nothing to kill. What do you mean? This stupid luggy treating Gerda exactly the same way. You tell her what to say, what to think. You know something? You're right. Well, I'm wrong, I admit it. You're absolutely right. From now on, you can disagree with me. Oh, no? Sure. And to answer questions? Of course. Good. I just remember where I met that guy. But I was... I'll be right back. My name is Günther Lütke. Give me my paper. You know, I kept looking at you in that restaurant. I knew I'd seen you somewhere. When you got up and limped, it all came back to me. You're the spitting image of a guy I knew over here during the war when I was in a prison camp. His name was Felix. Sie irren sich. Ich heiße Günther Lütke. Take it easy, I just said. You looked like him. Let me tell you about this guy. He had a bad knee just like yours. He couldn't get in the regular army. So they made him a prison guard. He hated it. He wanted action. Christine, yeah. Your eyes seem to understand English. That's enough. So this Felix started a private little war all his own. He hated the Americans. He hated the Poles. And I was both, so he picked on me. When we went out on work parties, he'd take me off in the woods and make me speak German. Not simple, easy things like Guten Tag and Auf Wiedersehen, but nice little tongue twisters like the Potsdamer Postkutcher, Potsdam, Potsdamer Postkutcher Kasten. That's tough enough for a German, but for an American, well, I made mistakes. And when I did, he'd correct me with the butt end of his rifle, right here in the kidneys. He used to swell up like a hunk of dough with too much yeast in it. I got about three lessons a week. It took me about seven months, but I learned German. Of course, I've forgotten some of it, but if the weather changes suddenly or I bend too quick, you'd be surprised how quick it comes back to me. It's a tough way to learn a language, but there was nothing I could do about it. I was a prisoner. I couldn't take a swing at him. Come to think of it, you're uh, sort of in the same spot now. You're a German civilian. If you got a beef with a soldier, you couldn't lift a finger, could you? I trying to get to the Russian sector so I couldn't follow it. You know, Felix, I could squeeze until you were as cold and wet as a statue, but it would be too easy. I'm going to give you an English lesson, Felix. I won't need a gun, but 
Now, the Germans have a hard time with their W's, don't they? Well, I'm going to give you something easy to start with. Not too tough. Just say it after me. Which way went the winged whippoorwill? Now, mind, I don't want to hear any V's in there. I'll have to correct you. Now, try it. Which way went the winged whippoorwill? It's V. No! Oh, no, Felix. Which way? Try it again. It's V. Oh, my God. Once more, Felix. Which way? It's V. No! We just go down. You mean go on into? No, no. Let's just let's just wait here. And then we'll walk back. Is it that jeep again? No. The best way is just a few blocks from here where the three sectors come together. We can cross over there. Well, what about Hank? Oh, he'll be all right. If we'll be hit one against Gunters and they decide the Germans started it. And Gerda will be there. She'll lie if necessary. Cigarettes and soap are not easy to get. Oh, why didn't I bring my identity card? No identity. Do I look Russian to you? Someplace. No, no, can't make anything of it. No, it's been coming out. Let's get this business settled once and for all. Let's call the major. Yeah, and I'll ring the duty officer. All right, now, don't let them get these people away from you. You mean they, they haven't been back here at all? No, and they haven't called on the telephone, too. Oh, it's all right. We're friends of this. Where's the room? We'll wait. Right here. Uh, trunk fell on my hand. Will you heat me some water so I can soak it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Turn on the lamp, will you? Don't suppose anybody around here's got a drink. Here. Don't make some coffee. Yes. Oh, but I don't know these people to use up their gas. Give them some cigarettes. You don't feel better? No. Your hand hurts more? Not my hand. 
seven years I've been waiting for the satisfaction of beating that face in. So now I've done it, so why do I feel this way so dirty? It's rather than feeling good. Go make the coffee, will you? Well, the Colonel states that the boundary is not 14 meters from this cornerstone, but from that one. Well, that's right, from over there. Fair enough. Where'd you get it? From a friend. Where'd the soldier get it? The Piet. Well, look, stupid, that's your answer. Here's a book that points out something pretty awful about America. Uh -huh. But it's written by an American, printed in America, it's a bestseller in America, and sent here by the American government to be sold in the PXs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, the next time you're in the Russian sector, do me a favor, will you? Uh -huh. Get me a copy of an anti-Russian book written by a Russian living in Russia, printed in Russia, and sent here by the Russian government. Do that and I'll give you a month's salary. You get the point? Now I know. In America, it is not wrong to be wrong if you say it's wrong. Well, what do you got stuck on your shoulders? A cantaloupe? I didn't say that. I'm only... I know, but I... Like the new look? Just adorable, especially the midriff. It's cold. Well, at least you're still a sergeant. I thought maybe they shrunk you to a corporal. I think they cleaned it with reducing pills. <laughs> you did a nice job of pressing though, don't you think? Which one are you going out of? 107 right here. How'd it go, Esther? Very interesting. Interesting. What'd you do, go to the library? Yeah, we read Schopenhauer together till 6 in the morning. Hey, Matt, what happened to you? They sent me to the cleaners. It's amazing how much you go through and still want to keep on living. Yeah, I guess it hasn't been easy. No, I never realized this. staying alive could be a 24-hour job. And I uh, suppose she wanted to know all about America? No, she didn't. She knows. She has friends who write to her from St. Louis. But why don't you come to She's a smart dame. She pays you fast. You're a nice, sweet, intelligent, understanding schmo. So with you, she's using a slow sympathy routine. I guarantee you with me, just like that. Why don't you stop jumping to conclusions? Or at least use them where they fit. They don't happen to fit here. Look, she's had it. So have a lot of other people in this town. But 
She didn't want to talk about it. I made her tell me. Yeah, I know. You just have to drag it out of these poor people. I feel so sorry for them. Every Sunday at 4 o'clock, I come here and bleed. You know, there are some things they just can't stand to talk about, like Rotterdam and Warsaw and Coventry and Lidice and Belsen and Dachau and Buchenwald. Did she talk to you about these things? No! This is something that happened 10,000 years ago. That the Germans never heard of. That they can't remember. But they didn't get meat last week. This they remember, and this they feed the suckers like you. Oh. What am I supposed to do? Blame all that on a, on a girl who was, what, 15 at the time? I've been playing this day ever since that.
We've been here longer than six months already. How do you like that? I've been home three weeks and didn't know it. I'd like to apply for permission to marry a German civilian. I've discovered, Sergeant, that all such applications made at 8.30 in the morning are always canceled a few days later. Why don't you wait till about 5 this afternoon? Well, it's not like that, sir. I was on duty last night. Oh. Well, I guess I can dispense with the talk I give the kids. I guess you're old enough to know your own mind. Well, ask the Sergeant. He'll give you the necessary papers. I'll go over the case as soon as you fill them out. But you must remember, Sergeant, that if and when I give my permission, the marriage cannot take place until 30 days before your departure. I understand that, sir. Uh, I noticed by the paper this morning rotation is starting. Is there any indication of when my number might come up? That's all pretty new. But I wouldn't count on anything for less than 60 days. Thank you, sir. Sure got it tough on how you stand it. Just grit your teeth. You get used to it. Want a cup of coffee? No, I can't. I gotta get back. They're trying to make the turnaround in 14 minutes. Will you take this? Give it to Frederica. The paper she's got to fill out. Sucker. Why don't Look, you... the only permission I need is from my squadron commander, not from you. Will you deliver it? If it clears up, I will. If not, I'll give it to Katie. In America, if you want to go from one place to another, you don't have to have permission from the authorities. No, all you need is a train for Just pack your bag and go. Unwahrscheinlich. Ah. Guten Tag, Herr Sieber. Guten Tag, Van Gallen. Hi. Hey. Uh, will you give this to Frederica? It's from Danny. Yes, that's uh, certainly. Okay. Wiedersehen. 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 Uh, was kostet das? coming through faster than we thought. Yes, sir, but what about my marriage application? I'm trying to get Berlin now to see what we can do about it. Hello! Is Major Bolt there? Major Bolt! I can't hear you! Speak louder! Major Bolt! Baker! Abel! Love! Hair! Yes, Bolt! These long-distance calls are murder. I think the German telephone system is made out of chicken wire. I hope we can speed up your application. Perhaps I could go home a couple of weeks later. Oh, no, Sergeant. That would mean 50 forms in triplicate and cost the government at least 30,000. Hello! Major Bolt? This is Major Hetzel. Who? Major Hetzel at Rhine, Maine. You'll have to speak louder. I can't hear you. Yes, louder. 
She lives in Berlin, sir. I know. Get one of the off-duty engineers to ride up with you, and he can work the trip back. Yes, sir. Thank you very, very much. Okay. But I wish you guys would stay single. like he's going to roost for a few days. I'm afraid not, Sergeant. It says here stateside departures will be on schedule. You will leave by train tomorrow for Bremerhaven and home by boat. Hey. 53rd Troop Carrier Squadron, Major Ethel speaking. Yes, sir, Colonel. Right away, sir. And we hope it will lift enough here for takeoff starting at 1,200 hours, with Temple off partially and intermittently open starting at 1,400 hours. It is important to land every ton we can, but your lives are more important. You will make your GCA approach, and when you have let down to your minimums, if you do not have sufficient visibility, pull up and come back. Taxi conditions at takeoff position here are not good. Proceed cautiously. Here is your time hack. Okay, in 20 seconds, it will be 11.15. Hey, 
tower of this 37. Our animal's up. What are you waiting for, the sun? Tower to 37. Keep your shirt on. How's your visibility? Can't complain. How's yours? Look wise, guy. How far can you see? Well, I can see up in the tower. What more you need a shave? Okay, it's your neck. You are clear, pardon the expression, to take off. 37, Roger. Bye bye. from Temple Off Tower cleared to 6,500 feet, cruise 170, regional 3009, remain on this frequency and give check call over one C, over. You're up. Sorry, Mag. It's a butte, feathering four, pull the firewall shut off valve. Got mixed down four. Gas off. Trail number four. Pull the fire bottle. Switch off. Generator off. Booster off. How did you look back there? About the same, sir. Maybe a little worse. You any good? It's good, Al. Better give him a call. Apple off tower, this is Big Easy 37. Number four is on fire, we can't get it out. Request emergency landing instructions, over. Well, you don't have to look so happy about it. Uh, Roger, Big Easy 37 from tower, QSY to frequency 14058 to approach control for emergency clearance, over. Emergency, do not acknowledge. Big Easy 37 with number four engine on fire will make an emergency landing on runway 27 left and to the west. Stand by. Big Easy 37. We have you identified. There's nothing between you and the slot. Crash crew standing by. Now steer left 180 degrees, bringing you on crosswind leg. Start descent to 1500 feet QSY to Jigsaw 140.58. Jigsaw 37 coming in on emergency landing. Do you have him? Roger. Big Easy 37, this is Jigsaw. How do you read? Over. Roger, take off 37, reading 5 by 5, over. Roger, 37, understand 5 by 5. Make final cockpit check, gear in the green. Now turn to a heading of 270. This is your final approach. Maintain altitude of 1200 until further advised. Five miles from touchdown on course. Do not acknowledge any further transmissions for the remainder of this run. Drifting slightly left, steer right to 273. You're approaching on course perfectly. Steer left to 271. Your new heading, 271. You're on course approaching glide path. Lose altitude at 750 feet per minute. You're on course heading 271. One 
touchdown on course going 50 feet low on glide path. Approaching building area, adjust your rate of descent. You're now 60 feet low. Still 60 feet low. Adjust your rate of descent, please. That's better. Glide path improving now. Steer right 271, three quarters mile from touchdown. Please. That's it. One quarter mile from touchdown. Approaching end of runway. Just listen, we gotta move fast. I gotta get to the consulate right away and get some paper stamped. But look, you gotta go home, get dressed, and meet me as soon as you can at the Temple of Bergamite. Tank and Gerda will be there, they're our witnesses. Now, where, where, where's your stuff? There. We gotta be witnesses at a funeral. Max Marion, that dame. Well, don't just stand there. Come on, look alive. Get moving. I don't feel like going. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like going. Look, I don't care what you feel like. Get your coat on. You treat me just like my father did. Get your coat on. Do this, do that, keep quiet, sit down, stand up. I'm tired of it, and I'm not going to stand for it anymore. What's the matter? Are you plastered or something? What have you been drinking? Words. Good words. I've been reading this. Your Constitution, the Bill of Rights, what Lincoln said, and Wilson and Roosevelt. No, don't let it go to your head. And after what I read, I see something now. You are a disgrace to America, and they shouldn't send people like you here. No, enough is enough. Who do you think you're talking to? It doesn't matter. Well, I, I can't say what I want. Article 1 says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That's what it says to big, stupid jackass. One more crack like that and so help me, I'll knock you from here to Potsdam. All right, go ahead. Hit me, you, you stormtrooper! Now, wait a minute. You're not yelling at some crummy crouch, you know. I'm the guy that brings you the cigarettes and the candy and the soap and the stockings and the I'm coffee. I'm sick of you and your coffee. Get out of here. I'll have you thrown out. Boy, and boy. I got the perfect right to Article 3 says, no soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. So get out and stay out and don't come back because of Baby, now you got it. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Don't let anybody push you around. Not even me. That's democracy. Now you got it. You can take your cigarette, take your candy. And That's your baby. You Keep it. Hit the bull's eye and you get your first paper. Yes, come on. You're a citizen, honey. Thank you. I mean, Gerda, 
Please put your coat on, baby. We'll be late.
Maybe I can't help much, but I want to see it. And if everybody who wants something different and better looks for it someplace else, what happens here? No, I'll stay. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Hey, there's one up. Looks like you'll get away. Yeah. How about you? I forgot to tell you I switched to permanent duty. Well, I, they got some new GCA equipment coming in. They want me to help get the case out of it, that's all. Why don't you watch what you're doing? Trillions of minutes. It's too busy their life. He isn't shown good. Aber seien Sie mal vorsichtiger. Oh, him sie the first sheep. Jawohl, has a shot. Well, I suppose if we're ever going to sell these stoops a new way of living, you're going to be a pretty good salesman. Anyway, it won't kill me to try it for a while. Hiya, Max. Going back with us? Yeah. remember us standing like this once before, shouting advice at me. Guess you were right. No, we were both wrong. You were too easy, and like Gerda says, I was acting like a stormtrooper. I suppose the answer lies somewhere between us. To say, if we never made mistakes, we'd be second lieutenants. Well, see you, Hank. Goodbye, Danny. What do you want, me, then? What is Kraus yelling about? He was now in the blockade off the home. Willie had us over them radio gehört. He says somebody heard over the radio the Russians are going to lift the blockade. Yeah, yeah, thank you. What are you thanking us for? Say, you think this thing is really over? When they start putting the seats back in these things, then I'll believe it. Well, I don't know. If they can take off when the birds won't even fly, then I guess a blockade isn't much of a weapon. Who are you and where are you from? Over. Uh, this is Air Force 7223, 19th Troop Carrier Squadron, Hickam Field, Honolulu. Rhine Main Tower to 7223, stand by for further instructions. Over. Roger, 7223, standing by. Air Force 6421 to Rhine Main Tower, over. Rhine Main Tower to 6421, where are you from? Over. Rhine Main Tower from 6421, we're from 54th Troop Carrier Squadron from Alaska, over. Rhine Main Tower, this is Air Force 9922. Over. 
Where are we from? Well, we're in the 20th, from Ramey, Puerto Rico. Over. Why this place sure caught it, didn't it? Not enough. This is where they should have used the A-bomb. Find main tower to 7223. Make a right turn and end a runway. You'll find some of your squadron in parking area. Park there. Come on, let show you where your bullets are. Hey, how about pulling up to a dry spot? Man, this is a dry spot. You see the rest of the base. It's up the elbow here. So we'll have to be here a while. You'll come right to the same spot here. On your day off and walk around because it's so dry. Yeah, we'll yeah. 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 Got more class than the Savoy. The maintenance you brought's been unloaded. You men set up your supply depot. I'll show you where. You engineers, report to your planes immediately. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. You called me with the rest of the engineers. I'm Kowalski, GCA. Yeah, you're down for Berlin. Berlin? Temple up. Catch a ride on any plane. This fool ain't bad enough. I gotta fall right in the middle of it. Berlin, yeah. Pick up the heading of 55 degrees. Sure glad they sent you along, Lieutenant. I've been sweeting by now. I guess it's just a milk run when they get used to it, huh, Lieutenant? Oh, sure. All you have to do is to stay in this 20-mile corridor, hold exactly 170 miles an hour, maintain exactly 6,000 feet, fly instruments continuously, keeping a three-minute interval, making radio checks on the second, maintain... Go ahead, Temple Office, this is 7223. Roger. Temple up. Flyburger, before landing checklist. Heater switches off. Oh. Off. Switch to take off and climb. Take off and climb. Main tanks on. On. Bypass valve down. Down. Pumps on high. Hi. Certainly put this field in a nice place, didn't they? Twenty degree flap. Twenty. 
full flap. Squadron, report to 19th operations immediately. Now oh, what? Well, somebody forgot to clean the carburetor. We all got to stand in the corner. Sounds like a hop to Australia to me. Don't say that. I got a date in an hour. What's the name? I'll keep it for you. I'm good at that sort of thing. Who isn't? Who will gather in September to ride on a mission Which capacity the winner And as soon as ready, proceed to Fairfield to soon California. At ease. Then to Westover Field, Chicopee Falls, Massachusetts. The set mission will be for the purpose of operational training and will be for a period of 45 days. Pardon me, Major. My name is Kowalski. I'm a GCA operator. Yes? I was wondering, sir, if I could be replaced on this mission. Why? Well, sir, if we're going where I think we're going, I wouldn't do a very good job. What have you got against Westover Field? Nothing, sir, but I got an awful lot against Germany, and I got a hunch that's where we're headed for. The Air Force isn't run on hunches, Sergeant. That's why we put lights on runways. Have a good trip.
headquarters in Berlin, the Cold War reaches a new crisis. The Russians haul down the red flag, signifying Soviet withdrawal from the four power command that has governed Berlin since the war's end. Taking no pains to disguise the fact that they want the Western Allies out of Berlin, the Reds begin a blockade of the city. Tracks are removed from the roadbeds, and trains are stopped for so-called technical reasons. Barges carrying food and coal find the waterways suddenly closed to them. Highways are blocked and deserted. The aim of the Russians to starve the entire city into submission backfires completely. In the shadow of the Soviet sector, 300,000 Berliners gather in protest and pledge support to the Western Allies. Meanwhile, Anthony Eden arrives in the German capital for an emergency meeting, as does the French military commander, General Koenig. Later, America's General Lucius D. Clay, speaking for the Western Allies, announces their decision. We have a right to be in Berlin, and we intend to maintain that right. But how ask freedom-loving people the world over and anxiously await the answer? Can this be true, or is it just an alluring hot-weather mirage to lead us on? To answer the question, I'm told this is Atlantic City's competition. <laughs> Attention, please. Your attention, please. 